Hello students, my name is Shayan Mitra. I am the faculty member of Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering of Greater Kolkata College of Engineering and Management. Today I am going to take in the uh, class of Embedded System and the topic is uh, RFID and Robotics. Okay, so we will cover this two uh, uh, topic in this lecture. Uh, so the subject code of this uh, uh, is subject code is 704B and this is lecture number 31. Okay. So let's uh, begin with the lecture. Okay, so let's begin with the topic robotics. And so, uh, as we are discussing here, is first the history of robotics. The term robot was first used by 19 uh, the used in 1920 in a play called R U R or Rosum's Universal Robots by the Czech writer Carol Capek. The word robot comes from the word robota, meaning in Czech, forced labor or drudgery. Okay, so it is, uh, it, it came from the name forced labor and drudgery. So that's why the robot name has been coined from the uh, word robota. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Now, the robotics terminology robot, mechanical device. Robot is a mechanical device that performs human tasks either automatically or by remote control robotics starting one second okay so in case of robotics uh, the, uh, or by remote control robotics the study and application of robot technology tele robotics robot that is operated remotely okay so these are the uh, coined terms that uh, is uh, frequently used okay so let's go to the next slide the definition of robot now the definition of robot is it's a reprogrammable multifunctional manipulator designed to move material parts tools or specialized devices through various programmed mo motions for the performance of a variety of tasks okay so it's it's very much self explanatory definition here so let's go to the next slide now the laws of robotics asimov proposed three laws of robotics the first law that uh, has been that has been uh, that had been proposed by asimov is a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm okay law 2 a robot must obey orders given to it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law okay so that has been self-explanatory that, that a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. So the law 2 is a robot must obey orders given to it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. And the third law is a robot must protect its own existing as existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first law. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. So all these three laws that has been that had been proposed by Asimov is trying to convey the message that a robot cannot harm or should not harm a human being. Now suppose we have pro uh, programmed a robot which is which is basically uh, we have uh, which is basically uh, 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 is used for to obey the uh, orders of human beings and as long as it's any action that doesn't doesn't come to a situ doesn't come to a circum doesn't create a uh, circumstance where it could harm a human being until and uh, uh, until then it will obey the law of human beings okay suppose there is a person who has uh, ordered a robot to kill another human being so it will not obey that rule okay and it's also mm, uh, uh, applicable to the uh, law 3 where it has been it, it is saying that suppose there is a uh, problem with the robot that someone is trying to uh, uh, someone trying to harm the robot but as long as it's a human being it can't protect itself it should be uh, uh, navigate or help the that human being to uh, destroy itself okay so that's are the three rules okay so let's go to the next slide the robot control loop the senses are speech, vision, acceleration, temperature, position, 
डिस्टेंस टच फोर्स मैग्नेटिक फील्ड लाइट साउंड एंड पोजिशन सेंस दिस इज फॉर द सेंस सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट कंट्रोल लूप द फर्स्ट नेक्स्ट वन इज द थिंक टास्क प्लानिंग प्लान क्लासिफिकेशन लर्न प्रोसेस डेटा एंड पाथ प्लानिंग एंड मोशन प्लानिंग ओके सो दिस आर द थॉट प्रोसेस थ्रू विच अ रोबोट कैन गो थ्रू सो दिस आर द टास्क प्लानिंग प्लान क्लासिफिकेशन लर्न प्रोसेस डेटा पाथ प्लानिंग एंड मोशन प्लानिंग थर्ड वन इज द एक्ट आउटपुट इन्फॉर्मेशन नाउ इन विच केस अ रोबोट विल मूव और एक्ट ओके सो द आउटपुट इन्फॉर्मेशन मूव स्पीच टेक्सट विजुअल्स व्हील्स लेग्स आर्म्स एंड ट्रैक्स दीज आर द रोबोट कंट्रोल लुक सेंस थिंक एंड एक्ट ओके लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट लाइन नाउ लेट्स कम टू द पार्ट ऑफ आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस ओके ओके आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस इज द इंटेलिजेंस एग्जिबिटेड बाई मशीन्स और सॉफ्टवेयर एंड द ब्रांच ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस दैट डेवलप्स मशीन्स एंड सॉफ्टवेयर with intelligence major ai researchers and textbooks define the field as the study and design of intelligent agents where an intelligent agent is a system that perceives its environment and takes action that maximizes its chances of success john mccarthy who coined the term 19 in 1955 defines it as the science and engineering of making intelligent machines okay so this is the basic definition of artificial intelligence and nowadays it is a booming uh, sector where people are uh, inventing uh, different kind of a uh, thing in uh, in particularly uh, related to the artificial intelligence okay next one the how do a robot walk a robot is any moving machine that can be programmed to perform tasks and gather information from its surroundings robots work from a central microprocessor that controls their movements they also have sensors for examining the environment and power sources okay so any robots may be moving machine that can be programmed to perform tasks and gather information from its surroundings and it will also the point that i need to add here is that it also the information that has been gathered by a robot will be processed by that same specific robot that, that is the basic task of a robot okay now the robots work from a central microprocessor that controls their movements they also have sensors for examining the environment and power sources and all these uh, receptors the sensors the microprocessor that is used to control the movement of a robot it will now as the artificial intelligence has uh, inducted or included in today's world it the the basic function or the uh, basic function i would say the basic principle the basic function of artificial intelligence is to gather the information from the surroundings and process that data and depending upon that using the artificial intelligence it a robot uh, will always help will always help to uh, create a new uh, work path or after the uh, processing or the uh, after the processing of the data it will sense all the uh, structure and act according to it okay let's go to the next slide types of robot so the industrial robots materials handling welding inspection improving productivity and laboratory applications ah, in this such in this such cases uh, different kind of robots are being used types of robots mobile robots robots that move around on legs tracks and wheels uh, in 1979 a nuclear accident in the usa caused a leak of radioactive material which led to production of special robot which can handle the radioactive material okay types of robots in this case we also have educational robots robotic kits are used to extensively in education robablo uh, Ro uh, robolab lego robo cube soccer domestic robots two types those designed to perform household tasks and modern toys which are programmed to do things like talking walking and dancing etc robot components okay one manipulator or rover main body of robot links joints other structural element of the robot 
this is known as the manipulator rover end effector the part that is connected to the last joint hand of a manipulator that is the, that is known as end effector third one is actuators muscles of the manipulators servometer stepper motor pneumatic and hydraulic cylinder these are the actuators sensors to collect information about the internal state of the robot or to communicate with the outside environment okay so these are four of the robot uh, robot components fifth one is the controller similar to cerebellum it controls just like the cerebellum part of our uh, human's brain uh, it controls and coordinates the motion of the actuators sixth one is the processor the brain of the robot it calculates the motions and the velocity of the robot's joints and etc it processes the data that has been um, uh, received by the different sensors all those data are being processed by the processor and depending upon that it will act upon it uh, seventh one is the software the operating system robotic software and the collection of routines these are required for as uh, th this is these are uh, the seven robot components next one is sensors sensors provide awareness of the environment by sensing things sensors are the core of robots it is a system that alerts the robots sensing can be in different forms like light sound heat chemicals force object proximity physical orientation and position magnetic and electric fields and resistance okay let's go to the next slide now these two are the actuators which is known as the locomotion and manipulation now the actuators locomotions are legs wheels and other exotic means okay and actuators Th these are the manipulation degree of freedom one second degree of freedom independently controllable components of motion arms convenient method to allow full movement in 3d more often used in fixed robots due to power and weight even for difficult control due to extra degrees of freedom grippers may be very simple two rigid arms to pick up objects may be complex device with fingers on end of an arm and probably need feedback to control grip force these are the grippers end effectors in robotics and end effectors is the device at the end of a robotic arm designed to interact with the environment end effectors may consist of a gripper or a tool the gripper can be of two fingers three fingers or even five fingers okay okay and the next one is the degrees of freedom each plane in which a robot can maneuver that is known as the degrees of freedom so the rotate base of arm pivot base of an arm bend elbow wrist up and down wrist left and right and rotate wrist these are the degrees of freedom in case of a robot the purpose of robots robots are also used for the following tasks dirty task repetitive tasks dangerous task impossible task robots assisting the handicapped can operate equipment at much higher precision than humans cheaper on a long term basis dirty task means it uh, it basically used to uh, it basically used to move a garbage from one place to another it could be a very uh, useful uh, uh, subject in, in the case of a repetitive task suppose we have to uh, a, a install or you have to uh, install a um, machine properly so all the, all the process that is required to install a uh, machine it is will be repeated and now suppose we have to install uh, 500 or, uh, or uh, we have to assemble 500 to 5000 or 5 lakh uh, or 5 crore um, machine so uh, to assemble uh, that huge number of machine it will it will be easier to or it will be uh, economical to use a robot and dangerous task suppose to in uh, emergency situation we can use a uh, robot okay an impossible task which can't be performed by a human being it, it could be uh, helpful to use a robot the robots assisting the handicap that I have already been I have already told uh, and can operate equipments at much higher precision than humans and it is very much uh, understandable that a robot can uh, do a job much in a higher precision than humans and cheaper on a long term basis it is a cheaper on long term basis okay so let's go to the next slide the robotic applications exploration space missions robot in the antarctic exploding volcanoes underwater exploration medical science surgical assistant assembly factories factories parts handling assembly painting surveillance security and home help all these are 
useful uh, usefulness of a robot advantages going to <coughs> going to far away from planets going far down to unknown waters and mines where humans would be crushed giving us information that humans can't get working at place 24/7 without any salary food plus they don't get bored they can perform tasks faster than humans and much more consistently and accurately most of them are automatic so they can go around by themselves without any human interference disadvantages people can lose jobs in factories it needs a supply of power it needs maintenance to keep it running it cost money to make or buy a robot future prospects scientists say that it is possible that a robot brain will exist by 2019 now 2019 has been already passed away and probably it, uh, uh, if that has been possible you wouldn't have had any noticed it uh, varner winch has suggested that a moment may come when computers and robots are smarter than humans in 2009 some robots acquired various forms of semi autonomy including being able to find power sources on their own the association for the advancement of artificial intelligence has researched on this problem okay so here we end our lecture of uh, robot uh, tics robotics uh, and the next lecture that i'm going to start is about the rfid radio frequency id okay so let's begin with the lecture uh, rfid okay so what is rfid it's a radio frequency id a radio frequency identification is an identification system used for retail and wholesale security veterinary veterinary and military purposes the rfid technology sector is growing rapidly as new uses for it are found technology used to track and identify a person or object by means of radio transmission radio frequency id systems can be either active or passive you may be surprised to find that you have been using rfid technology for years without knowing it okay next slide is this uh, how the rfid work three com main components to a basic rfid system is radio frequency id tag a transponder a antenna and a radio frequency id reader or interrogator okay this three part are now first one the uh, how does the rfid work so radio frequency id tag a transponder consists of a microchip and an antenna okay so it this is the integrated antenna and this is the tag and this is the microchip okay and now that antenna attached to an object to be tracked vary in size depending upon the purpose uh, that is going to be fulfilled by the specific rfid the uh, subject size can be different so stores information about the object id number kilobytes dynamic info maintained okay read only or read write will be performed by this rfid contact contactless that's a uh, important uh, advantage of rfid non line of a site and read range few inches to hundreds of feet okay depending upon the purpose next one and how two classes of rfid tags are passive and active based on the means in which they receive power passive power source is provided by the rfid readers generated field smaller size tags must be within close range of reader active have an internal power source larger more expensive expensive and shorter life longer reading ranges and more memory okay how does rfid work then and the antenna will work an antenna or aerial is an electrical device which converts electric power into radio waves and vice versa it is used for communication between reader and tags now the rfid reader retrieves information from the rfid tag detects and activates tag reads and writes data to tag may consist of a signal processor operating system antenna virtual memory and transmitter receiver unit or uh, an active or passive depending on the purpose now how does rfid work the this is the basic building block now this is the reader or programmer this is the tag antenna this is the air interface between and this is the trans this is the transporter tag and this is the reader antenna okay this is the basic building block of a radio frequency id okay and now okay one second yes now active rfid active uh, radio frequency id devices are radio frequency tags with an attached power supply these tags emit a signal whether or not there is an antenna in the vicinity to receive the data okay now suppose we use this is the picture of that we use it in a car the radio frequency id 
is being used in a car okay one second now passive rfid passive rfid devices are radio frequency tags that do not have an attached power supply the passive rf tag receive their power when it is emitted from an active antenna in close proximity passive rfid tags generally operate at distinct frequencies low frequency at 125 to 134 megahertz high frequency 13.56 megahertz and ultra high frequency 856 megahertz to 960 megahertz frequency now this is the inductive frequency is between low frequency for 1000k 1m for middle frequency high frequency this for very high frequency and this for ultra high frequency this this is a radiative range okay so wavelength will be as according to this now, in case of common rfid this is the uh, megahertz or gigahertz and less frequent rfid bands are 5 7 megahertz or 433 max to max 5.2 to 5.8 gigahertz frequency will be available for low frequency less frequency rfid bands and for common rfid bands the frequency will be in this range okay advantages of rfid an rfid system is the non contact non line of sight nature of the technology it enhances it uh, efficiency it it enhances efficiency traceability of production hundred of tags can be read in seconds they can be combined with sensors it not only saves time but also provides real time information and data access to anybody rfid tags can store a lot of information and follow instructions and has the ability to pinpoint location and reliability okay. okay let's go to the next slide disadvantages active rfid can be expensive because of batteries there still needs to be regulations about rfid guideline there is a privacy concern toward rfid devices for example some claim that walmart is infringing on natural rights by overseeing what customers buy rfid may be easily intercepted even if it is encrypted it takes a lengthy time to program rfid devices anybody can access information about anything in case of rfid it is possible to compromise an rfid system by wrapping the protected material in two to three layers of ordinary household foil to block the radio signal okay these are the disadvantages of a radio frequency id system okay applications rfid tags come in a wide variety of shape and size they may be encased in a variety of materials animal tracking ta tags inserted beneath the skin can be rice sized tags can be screw shaped to identify trees or wooden items credit card shaped for use in access application the anti theft hard plastic tags attached to meter merchandise in stores are also rfid tags heavy duty 120 by 100 by 50 millimeter rectangular transponder are used to track shipping containers or heavy machinery trucks and railroad cars okay use rfid if you want to wirelessly identify something without time line of sight use rfid if you want a computing device but not humans to see the id use in tracking assets people documents car or any important thing which wanted to be tracked airport security baggage track and identify passengers and airline luggage medical restricting access tracking patients guests with authorized wristbands tracking babies to reduce risk of abduction tracking of medicine and equipment postal services tracking of mail packages these are the advantages future rfid the future of electronics rfid and antennas is quite interesting material innovation in organic polymers nanotechnology metamaterials and innovations in processing such as advance in photolithography electron beam lithography and direct laser optical lithography electrophoretic new battery power technologies the whole area of printed electronics on organic new material cloth and paper all are in motion to step by step transform the semiconductor world more flexible and cheaper production will enable a new generation of rfid growth mass scale is the, the amount of technology innovation transformation within up to 2020 plus uh, time okay
conclusion it is an another tech revolution which will change our lives completely and it will be used for 24 7 days the billion dollar industry that rfid has evolved into has done great good for a lot of different fields rfid has given doctors the ability for quick access to patients records the assurance of accounted merchandise for small business and large alike and the government the ability to conduct taxes for tolls in this technological day and age but with as many benefits as it has radio frequency identification overwhelming credibility is balanced out by the criticism against it through rfid allows for the allocation and distribution of sensitive information if that information is compromised the effects could be devastating for there to be order in the realm of rfid legislation and guidelines need to be set up and enforced to ensure the integrity and confidence of the data being communicated which will in turn help radio frequency identification emerge as most secure and advanced technology okay so we conclude our lecture here okay thank you